Welcome back to the Law Factor Live. The phone lines are still open, but whilst waiting for calls, I want to just run through some of the questions we've already been, or statements uh, people have sent. Uh, you said something interesting about mums being blamed when some things go wrong, when the dads aren't around in the first place. I wanted to make a point that in our St. Lucian society, there are quite a few men who take responsibility for their kids, even if they live with the mums. But the mums brainwash the kids and paint such terrible images about these dads teaching the kids to resent their fathers, only to find out that dad, who has been absent from the household, has actually been more of a parent than mom, whom they lived with. Uh, okay, that's another thing is in broken homes, when dads leave or relationships don't work out, they always seem to think that it's just a case of sending money. But at the end of the day, the kids grow up to remember the memories and moments spent. Now, how much have you spent? But moms, I think... But mums, I think, are to blame for that because a lot of the time we focus solely on the dad sending money as much as that is important too, instead of the physical quality time spent with the kids. Now, that, I, I have to say, you know, I've heard that a lot too, where women seem to be more interested in money to look after the children than the actual things that a man can teach his child, whether it's a boy child or a female child. I've heard that uh, quite a lot. Okay, hi, I'm a young man who, who I think don't, don't know my mum, something and dad. Sorry, it's, really, it's disjointed. I'm reading it for the first time. Um, but my respect and my love goes out. Okay, I don't, I don't know my mum and my dad, but respect goes to my aunt and grandma who did a very good job in making me who I am today. I forgive my mum and for only one reason is because of God. All right, I'm going to have to read through some of the others because it's just too disjointed. Uh, a lot of the things I'm seeing here is emotion. Mm -hmm. They're not writing properly because they're so emotional about the yeah. subject. So yeah. I'm going to, whilst you're speaking, Ramita, I'm going to try and read them and digest them so I can tell everyone what everyone is saying. Okay. So earlier on, I asked you a question. About Ramita, fathers. About fathers, yes. And, and this not only goes for fathers, it goes for mothers too. Um, there are times when you know, kids are raised in a household, <coughs> Sorry. like the gentleman who called before the last caller was talking about there was no hugging, there was no kissing, there was no telling I love you. And he is determined that he's going to do the complete opposite with his kids so that he can have a very close bond with his, with his children. So you will find that their parents who will be determined, look, this was not an ideal situation for me but it doesn't mean that I have to raise my children like that. And I was saying to you, Delia, that when we look at parenting styles, because I think that was another question you were asking, and I think the two of them can be linked. Mm -hmm. um, we do borrow from how we were parent in okay. order to parent our children. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we look at how we were parented and we determine, I am not going to do this with my children. I'm going to do the complete opposite. I'm going to do this because to me this is what is better and we become more aware as we develop. Mm -hmm. So when a, a father, let's take that for it as, an, as an example because it's the father who called, when he was raised in the household that he was not, he did not, not know his father, there was no connection with his father, mum was there but mum was busy trying to keep the household together and therefore she did not, she was not able to say I love you, she was not able to hug. So the siblings did not learn how to hug either. Mm -hmm. But he is aware that this is what is important. So he will do the same thing. He, he will not do the same thing. But there are those who will do exactly the same thing in the families that they create as they get older. Mm -hmm. That, you know, look, my mom didn't hug me, my dad wasn't around. So I grew up and look at me, I'm fine. Mm -hmm. But no, you're not fine. No, you know, all the things that you're saying, I would really, really love to respond to them, but I want to go through so some of the other ahead. things of that course. we can perhaps touch on. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to ask, how could I love my mom when both of my sisters were molested and she never did anything about it? I don't hate her, I just have a rage towards her. When I try to speak to her about it, she just gets angry. I just can't forgive her. That's a tough one. Very tough, very serious as well. Very serious, yes. Sounds like she has the mother even ha the ha hasn't forgiven herself. 
first to begin with to, to allow that to happen because I'm, so, I'm sure I'm sure her hands were tied and she was only doing it out of the need to give those kids uh, some sort of life from that man I'm sure he was so, that's know. very dangerous what you yes, just said so that's a very extremely dangerous thing you just said but, and you know, I, I, but, I, but people do it no but you, kn you yeah, know but people do it out of that you know out of that need you know for I'm sorry but survival. I think there's no I'm, I'm sorry no. I'm people do it but yeah correct me if I'm wrong but it seems as if you're saying well it happens no and I, yeah I, I, and I'm not condoning it I'm just saying that from their point from the mother point of view she, you know it's it, it was just a me, it, it, she was no, hopeless. No one no. should tolerate that. No. And the no. mother is the last person who should tolerate that yes. kind of thing. And, and I, I would agree with you too, Delia, because, I mean, whilst there can be excuses made, right. and some women have made, have come forward with excuses such mm -hmm. as this, that, you know, they needed the man right. in the house, the house yeah. for economic reasons. Okay. But at the same time, your vulnerable children are being abused Abuse, yeah. and it is going to taint their life forevermore. Can I it's just remind everyone, I, mean, I know we can go through this, uh, yeah. we've got but so but many things, not, and yes. I just want to point out some of the things that people are Re are sending to me so mm -hmm. people can understand when this program is off it doesn't it doesn't just turn off because it's 10 o'clock yeah. it keeps on going on all these things keep on going on okay my dad was uh, my dad and I was in a fight I was 19 years why because a boyfriend I was seeing and he put me out of the house because it was his house um, and because his wife told him something about me and my boyfriend I can never forgive my father because of what he did to me the last caller really touched me and brought back memories because I myself was raised with my mom and stepdad and neither of them never said to me they loved me and I was longing to hear that. Um, hi Delia, I do agree with the science of your topic tonight. However, we need to allow or encourage people to take responsibility for their own lives, identify the problem and move. The issue of parents, we need to understand that staying together may not be the best for our children. Yeah. Yes. All right. And I said that if I ever had kids, I would have a totally different attitude towards my kids. I have three daughters that I make sure I tell I love you every day. And as a young woman, I am proud of myself. Good to you um, and your guests. I want to comment or answer the question you asked why men who they, who they, who they fathers never showed them love. I am one who experienced it. When my father and mom separated, I saw my mom with different men, but she did it because she had to ca take care of us. And as I'm grown, I understand why she did it. And because she gave us the reason when we had the understanding and I love her more. Now my dad did not show me love. And as I'm grown, I make it my duty because that's how I feel. So there's lots of reasons why yeah. these are happening. And I've yeah, had someone so on the reasons. phone holding for the longest while. So I'm sorry for that. And I hope you're still there. Thank you for holding on. This is Delore Factor Live. Have I lost you? Yes. I have. I'm really sorry. I didn't want to cut in between mm -hmm. of this. So I'm just sharing with everybody all these things. When you see someone with a smile on your face, they're going through all these things. And why is it just stopping at you calling us or you sending us all these messages i'm inundated and i know that a lot of people aren't calling because of course it is such a small place people's voices are recognized yes. and we're talking about our families so it's a difficult thing back to the phone thank you so much this is still Factor live yes one thing i've realized one day i went to martinique my godmother told me that she loved me so much i cried so much right so then i went to church and the pastor was saying about love and, you know, due to circumstances and how your mother was raised, she could never tell you that she loves you. So after church, I went home and I told my mom, I love my mom said, but I love you also. But it's just that they don't, they, they love you, but it's just that because of the way that they were brought up, yeah. I know because their parents never told them that they love them, yes. mm -hmm. they yeah. treat you the same way. That does not mean that they love you because I always thought oh, my mom did not love me. This is why I passed out crying. Mm -hmm. But when I thought about that, I went to church and the pastor said, you know what? Maybe they have it in their own way. They show you that they love you, because a mother's love is the best love. You could have how many step moms, you could never have another mother. And I've respected that, and I love my mom for that. Thank you so much for sharing that You're with welcome. us. Thank you. Um, let me just just give another. Um, 
someone someone else. Yeah, I'm going to do one more, then we have to go to a break. Um, I never grew up with a mother's love and guidance. When I got pregnant, I was very angry, and for three months, I was praying for a miscarriage. After I heard the baby's heartbeat, that changed. I promised from this point onwards never to be like my mom. I do love my child to death, but sometimes I see my mom in me when it comes to discipline. As much as you try to be different, there will always be a part of your past that will affect you. Very true, isn't it? Very true. You know, and as I was reading that, I could actually visualize mm -hmm. how that was and how it must be for, for this person. And, you know, I hope that somewhere along the line, things can get a bit better in terms of your relationship with your mother. Now, when we come back, we're going to choose tonight's winners. So stay with us. It could be you.